Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is One Skill, and in today's video, let me show you how you can create this beautiful interactive quiz in PowerPoint. So let's just click on this button, start a quiz, and let's see what this quiz has to offer. And here comes the first question, which planet is known as the red planet? And we have four possible answers, and only a single of those answers is the correct one. And if we click on a wrong answer, that answer becomes red, okay? So Jupiter is wrong, Saturn is wrong. And once we find the correct answer, that answer becomes a green. And at the same time, we get this little button that we can click on to continue to the next uh, slide or to the next question. So you can create as many of these question slides as you wish. In this quiz, we have five questions. So let me quickly go through the rest of the questions so that we can start with the tutorial. Okay, so what is the capital of Lithuania? And since I am Lithuanian, it is a pretty easy one for me. It is Vilnius. Okay, let's keep on going. And now, who wrote Romeo and Juliet? So I guess not this guy. Not this guy. Maybe Mark Twain. Nope. It has to be William Shakespeare because it's the last possible answer. Okay, let's keep on going. And now, what is the largest mammal in the world? I guess it should be perhaps Blue Whale. Okay, let's keep on going. All right, and the last question in this quiz, what is the hardest natural substance on Earth? Not gold, not iron, not quartz. I guess it is diamond. That's beautiful. And at the same time, we're getting this beautiful confetti animation. And now let's jump into the tutorial. So let me collapse this demo section, demo section, and demo. It's like a Nemo, finding Nemo, finding Nemo. Okay, let's go to the tutorial. And now, as you can see, this background is absolutely white. So let's fill it with a beautiful uh, gradient fill. Let's click on gradient. And as you can see, my gradient is using two color stops. So the first color is dark blue. Let me show you the hex code. We can go into more colors. We can go into the, uh, yes, custom tab. And over here, you can see the hex code. So this is the hex code for the first color stop. And the second color stop is absolutely black, but it is at the position 95%. And of course, you can change the position just like that and change how your gradient looks like but let's go with 95 percent position i think that was looking beautiful okay my friends and next we have to add these kind of beautiful diamond shapes and let me show you how fast and how easy it is to create these kind of shapes in powerpoint so all we have to do is go to insert let's go to shapes now let's go to rectangles section and let's use this guy which is called rectangle diagonal corners snipped okay snipped that sounds nice snipped and here we have two yellow handles so we can grab this guy and let's move it to the right side now let's grab this guy and let's move it to the left side and skadoosh this way we get this perfect looking kind of square diamond shape that's beautiful and now let me quickly jump to my assets uh, section we can just uh, select this guy and hit control alt nope Control shift c okay to copy the formatting and now let's click on this guy and let's hit Control shift b to paste the style and skadoosh we get the same style so let me quickly show you what kind of style this guy is using so first of all it is using a solid fill so i guess it is the same blue color well it's pretty much the same as the background color okay and next it has a white outline of three points and next, as you can see, it has this subtle inside uh, the shadow. So let's go into the shadow options. And here is that uh, bright color that I'm using for the inside shadow. Here is the hex code. And I'm just using this uh, preset, this inside center shadow with a blur of 40 points. Okay. And this way you'll get the look. And we can double click inside of this guy. And as you can see, it is using Poppins Semibold font. And you can just basically type in anything that you wish but in this case is going to be our starting slide so let's just type and start the quiz okay yeah it's beautiful and now we can select let me just make sure that this guy stays in the center and now we can just select this guy let's go to insert and let's click on link and let's just link it to the next slide okay and let's just click OK. So once we will click on this start button, we will jump into the next slide where we will see our first question. OK, my friends. And before we continue, a couple of important steps that we have to do. 
First of all, let's make sure that our slideshow is set up in the kiosk mode. As you can see, it is uh, right now browsed at kiosk mode. And this is really important because once you are using your presentation in a kiosk mode, all of the usual mouse clicks uh, won't be able to move your slides forward. Uh, you'll be able to navigate your presentation only through hyperlinks. And in this case, this is what you want. So let me just show you what happens in case we would use this default option presented by speaker. Okay, so let me just jump to the first question, for example. Okay, so once you are browsing, you know, with the default mode, you can click, for example, over here, and you just jump to the next question, and you probably, probably don't want that to happen. So that's why kiosk mode is important. Let's get back to the kiosk mode once again. Okay. And now, once we play the presentation, I can click around wherever I wish. Okay. And only the animation triggers and only the hyperlinks will work. And now finally, once we get this button, we can actually jump to the next slide because it has hyperlink to jump to the next slide. So please make sure you're using the kiosk mode in your presentation. So once again, you have to do, you have to go to the slideshow tab. Click on the setup slideshow and choose browse that kiosk mode. And at the same time, while we are on this slide, let's go to the transition step. And currently we have this transition set to none. So let's choose fly through transition. I think it's it's going to look nice in this situation. Okay. So now let's just duplicate this slide. And on the duplicate slide, let me delete this shape. Okay. And let me just jump to my assets section over here. I have already prepared a couple of shapes. So let me just copy all of these guys and let's paste them over here. So let me just open up the selection pane so that we can better see all of these shapes. So first of all, we have this question at the top. Next, we have a couple of answers and we have this next button at the bottom, which should appear only once we click on the correct answer. Now, let me show you how we can animate all of these guys. So, for example, let's say that the correct answer is uh, answer B. Okay. So, let me just type in correct. Okay. And let's say that the rest of these guys are wrong. Of course, you can type in anything that you wish. Just typing, you know, just for illustration purposes. So, let's say this answer is wrong. So, let's make sure we select it. Let's go into the animation tab. We can open up the animation pane. And for this wrong answer, let's add an animation, which is called object color. Okay, let's click on it. We can make sure that uh, it starts on a click. That's good. We can reduce duration to 0 0.25 seconds. And now in the animation options, so you can just double click on this animation to open up the animation options. Let's choose a different color. Let's go to more colors. Okay, let's go to standard tab and let's choose, for example, this yeah, I think this shade of purple or red is looking good. Okay, that's looking good. And now the thing is, we want to trigger this animation, not just by a simple mouse click, but we want to trigger this animation once we click on this exact shape, which as you remember in the selection pane, let me just hit Alt F10 to open up the selection pane. Yes, here it is. So this shape is called A, <laughs> A in parentheses, okay? So now we select this animation and let's go to this special button called trigger and let's choose on trigger on click off A. Okay. Now, as you can see, we get this little word trigger. So now this animation will be triggered once we click on this wrong answer. So let's just check it out on the full screen. Let's see if it works. Don't worry about this next button. We will fix that later on. But now once we click on this button, it becomes red. But as you can see, the text disappears as well. So let me show you how we can fix that. Let's make sure that we open up the animation pane. And let's add one more animation to this wrong answer. Let's add this animation, which is called a font color. Yes, here it is, font color. Let's drag it down in the same uh, group under the trigger. And in this case, let's make sure it starts with previous. So together with the first uh, animation. And let's make sure it has the same duration, 0 0.25 seconds. And now let's double click to jump into the animation options. And for the font color, let's just choose white. Because we just want this text to stay white. Okay. Let's check it out once again. 
By the way, as you can see, clicking around doesn't work because we're in kiosk mode, so that's nice. And now once we click on this wrong answer, you know, this background becomes red and the text stays white. This is what we want. That's beautiful. And now we can basically reuse these animations from this shape. So let's make sure that this shape is selected. Let's double click on the animation painter. And now we can paste the same two animations to the rest of these um, diamond shapes. Okay, we can click on the animation painter to deselect it. And of course, for this guy, we have to change the shape fill color. So let's double click on this animation and instead of red or this pinkish red, let's go to more colors and let's choose, for example, this shade of green. That's looking nice. I'll let's just check it out on the full screen. We'll fix this blue, this green button later on. So this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. And this is correct. Skadoosh. And now once we click on the correct button, this next button should appear. So let's do that. So let's select this button and let's just add a simple flying animation to this guy. Direction from the bottom. For the animation duration, let's use, okay, half a second looks good. And let's make sure it starts, for example, um, with previous or after previous. Okay, well, after previous is good. And now let's just drag it in the same trigger group, which is B. So this is the correct uh, group. Okay, and now let's just drag it below these two animations. So first of all, this button should become green. The text should stay white. And then this button should go up from the bottom. So let's check it out on the full screen. Okay, as you can see, now this button is hidden. And only once we click on the correct answer, this button comes up. And now we can click on next to continue to the next question. And in the same way, we can create as many of these question slides as we wish. So now let me just duplicate this slide by hitting Control D. And now let's say that on this slide, the answer uh, C is going to be the correct one. And answer B is going to be the wrong one. So now you can either open up the animation pane and change the colors. So for example, here is the answer C. So we can click on this color and we can change it to the green one. Okay, that's nice. And in the wrong animations, in the, I mean, for this guy, Let's open up the colors and for this guy, let's choose pink or this red. That's looking beautiful. The other option I wanted to suggest is just using the animation painter and just, you know, using the correct animation and paste it to the correct answer. But I guess just jumping into the animation options and choosing the right color is an easy option as well. And one more thing, we have to make sure that this guy appears once we click on the correct answer, which in this case is letter C. So let's just move it in the correct group, which is over here. And let's test it out. Okay. This guy's wrong. This guy's wrong. This guy's wrong. And this guy is correct. Skadoosh. And we can keep on going. Okay. But since that was the last slide, we just start over again. So this is the whole magic, my dear friends. And of course, if you'd like to learn how to create uh, this kind of animation, this little this little highlight animation please just type in the comment section below highlight or confetti or skadoosh or anything else that you wish and i'll do this little highlight animation and as you can see on this slide we have a few more of these additional entrance animations and these are just to make sure that all of these questions and elements come in nicely into the slide but now you know all of the essential mechanics all of the essential uh, secrets how to make this kind of interactive quiz work okay so that was all for this tutorial thank you so much for watching my dear friends stay happy stay healthy and i'll see you on my next video peace